Hi, we're going to continue to do a review. This is the second review on the Gen 3 EV bike fat tire. And uh, we're just going to go through it uh, and look at some pros and cons of the bike uh, from a really detailed level in terms of the handling and capability of it. Uh, we're going to take you on a ride itself, show you the type of terrain and trails that it can handle, and then end with some closing remarks and um, another little maintenance issue at the very end uh, that I'll point out. And we'll also look at the fat tire itself. We're going to continue to do a review on the Gen 3 bike and just show uh, why we get foldable bikes because they can be transported into a vehicle. Now, I did a couple modifications. One, reinstalled the front tire, which was a bit of work, but it actually helped the bumping warpage problem. Apparently, the tire didn't seat properly, so it had to be reseated. Adjusted the fork. And so you should be ready to go with a fully charged battery. Perfect. Just like that. So I'm ready to go check it out. With the e-bike and with these foldable, you have to just choose it very carefully. I think they're good for green runs. Maybe the odd blue one if you really want to get... Uh, technical but that's all I would do you don't you want to stay off of those other ones it just doesn't have the stability or the capability of it but it'll get you on these roads so we're going to just do a preliminary check on how this bike handles goes both up and down okay and so we'll see how it handles this one That tire is good, but boy, you sure don't want to lock up those. And here I point out that the fat tire just really handles much differently than a conventional mountain bike tire, so you really have to watch it. It takes a lot of getting used to, and I don't know if I'd recommend it for the average rider to go off road with it. It's just too much. wants to go on these things and even on a trail like this I mean I should have two hands on the bike um, or I'll try to mount my camera because yeah you lose that front wheel and you're done and I mean that's the case on any bike right the trail goes over there I think there's a a blue trail up here we might take a look at. I think I'm going to need two wheels for this one. Uh, let's see. Pretty good. Put two hands. Good. Nice and easy. Oh, up. Help out that motor a bit. That's a bit of pedaling. And we'll stop right there. So over terrain like this, should be good. Okay, good. Blue, okay, I think we can do blue. Here we and I'll trim down to one for power, that's all I want. And let's see what we got here. Yeah, hmm. Bit of a cliff there. Um, and, the and the other thing is you can just walk it down if you're unsure, right? So this is a pretty bad blue run. Um, so, uh, but I think it's, uh, negotiable based on what I see.
Actually, I think I'll walk it down here. What am I trying to prove? Okay, good. Gear one, power setting one, check. Good, now we're going. Carefully watching. Good, okay. Didn't quite make it up there. It's okay, we'll keep her going. Coconut the highway there, that's better. Okay, we got here. Yeah, that power just wants to go on, on or off. It doesn't really go uh, half on or off. It's either on or off. Pretty bumpy. That's a bit dicey. Good. There, loosening them up. Watching the roots. Watching the rocks. This is what we try to do. Just leaving it at one, I think, despite the jerkiness of setting one, I think it's actually pretty good in the sense that it doesn't snap on and give you as quite as much power. It still gives you a lot, but it doesn't give you that real sustained Power, which is not what you want on there. So now I'm on a blue, now I'm on a green run again. Good, okay. Looks good here on the mountain bike trail. So, you know, and some people have asked me about it, like, you know, can these things work on the, on these trails? And the short answer is I think they can, but you have to be very trained, I'd say, even using them on a green run, because, man, it can be dangerous. I wish I had it on camera when I spilled so people could see it. But, uh, you know, that's me, a veteran mountain bike driver that's been driving for years, right? Where does that put somebody that's perhaps a bit of a novice? So... Carefully, carefully, carefully is what we try to do. In that nice grinding gear. Again, with the fat tire. This None of this would be possible without the fat tire. No doubt about it. So. The fat tire is a must. So that would be about the limit of the trails that I would take on this bike, I think. I wouldn't do, do anything heavier than that. So it's a good rider. Um, got me through a couple of technical trails. But I've been used to mountain biking for a long time. And um, you just really have to know what you're doing uh, and know your limits and play within it. Don't exceed them with this thing. It is inherently unstable. The bike just because of the wheel size and the shape of it especially going downhill i noticed you know the forks don't notice how they don't jet out too much they're kind of right below you and that may be good to save room but not so good when we're talking about going downhill okay to the thing there so there's no thread lock and so we're going to just put some product on it like a basic thread locker to help it do one of them uh, I noticed almost vibrated loose on my last ride and so I wouldn't want to be trying to replace the screws I'm sure you do shake this well before using and uh, just treat the, the screws like so
So here we are at the end of the day. Um, my final take, I'll just try to summarize. The fat tire bike has advantages and disadvantages. Um, it is advantageous in the way that it shocks from bumps and so on, and uh, is forgiving on rocks and roots and other stuff. You have a narrow rim, um, you're gonna get caught up in that kind of stuff. Um, the disadvantage of these e-bikes that are folding and have smaller wheels this 20 incher is that they don't give you as much stability so when you're picking up speed you're just not going to get that stability as you would on a long on a bike with a bigger wheel so the bike is i would say inherently unstable okay now that's okay it just means you just got to get used to it and just to add to that point um it means that you have to drive the bike more. You have to steer it more. You have to use more judgment. You have to put in more corrections on your handlebars and balance the bike better. So that is what I noticed between the conventional mountain bike and this one. Right, you have to get used to it. You need to just take it easy and take it slow with it. You have a battery here, you know, throwing some weight and balance issues into the mix, no doubt. It's located at a good position right above your seat. The seat is not adjustable unless you do it manually. So that means when you're doing downhill mountain biking, you better be careful that your seat's not too high or your legs won't be able to stop you from a fall. So advantages and disadvantages. Um, but this bike can certainly hold its own uh, on a trail or off-road. But again, I'd recommend practice and make sure that you know what the bike is capable of doing. So if that front tire locks up, obviously you're going down. And it's not going to take a long time for you to go down. Very suddenly. Because the fat tire grabs more surface area. And that can be advantageous as we discussed. It might be disadvantageous if you're talking about trying to go near a, a, a corner, right? Where a thinner mountain bike will dig right in, right? And give you lots of traction. This thing kind of tends to float above whatever terrain you're talking about right and so it'll float on the surface which can be good right you won't get bogged down in the mud but it's not going to dig in like sharply to get into the terrain and so um you have to weigh those benefit analysis when you're taking on a trail but the advantage is it'll you know be forgiving we do have shocks on this bike, but we certainly don't have any rear ones. Some do, some don't. But even uh, rear shocks might only give you this much. I mean, you want forgiveness with your back wheel. So feeling those bumps and so on uh, really made a difference uh, for that. So um, the other advantage I'll say about fat tires, which I really like, is heavy duty look how wide that tire is right what that means is that warped wheels how many bicyclists out there ever have warped wheels wheels that need to be trued all the time okay well i took this over some pretty serious bumps and i checked the true of the wheels not even a glitch of being off center so the fat tire gives you that advantage as well so but this bike, as I said, because it's so small of wheels, it's inherently unstable. And it's also unstable because of just the position of the handlebars and the forks. So, you know, can it go mountain biking? I, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Okay, it's just not maybe designed for that. But on a trail, off-road, up some hill, over some rock, sure it can. And I would challenge the users of it to just... Take it slow, take it easy, make sure you know what its limitations are and make sure you're ready and you're used to the fat tire because they are very different than mountain biking. If you're transitioning from a mountain bike to this, which I have been, it's gonna be a transition time. You're gonna to have to get familiar with it and, um, and it's handling uh, characteristics and techniques. 
and that's not to mention the e the e bike capability of it. Um, I must say the power and the drivetrain on this machine I would give a five star. Okay, it is reliable. I've had no glitches, no failures, and the big lesson learned was go with a brand name. How many e bikes have I seen on the market with no brand name? The Bafang or whatever it's called, um, is, the, the you know, it's like the Shimano or the the Trek of, of China. It's the good name. And uh, that has absolutely been made evident. And so you got good power, you're, you're doing well. And um, if you lose power on these e-bikes, it's just such a heartbreaker. It, it turns a bike into a piece of junk instantly. Now we've mentioned some sloppy brakes. Uh, the back brake was sloppy again, even though I adjusted it this morning. And so we're going to have to go in there and adjust it again and see what the problem is. Um, doesn't look like it's lined up right there. So we'll try to figure out what's going on and adjust the brakes again and see what's, uh, and make sure they are true and everything. But um, overall, there we go. Um, it's a it's a good bike um you know some people might laugh at the look of it some may, people might say you know this is a great bike i need to get me a hold of one of these it folded up into my element fine i'm gonna test and see if it can fold up into my honda civic the trunk fine and i mean if it can do that it opens up a lot of doors i have a boat and i have frequently gone to the gulf islands um, and i know for a fact this thing would fold up and go onto a boat and enable me to uh, to tour the, the the Gulf Islands and get to job sites and so on there. So it has strategic advantages in that sense, um, you know. And uh, yeah, so that's about my take on it. Well, the e-bike's been fun, and it's fun doing these reviews. I hope it raises awareness and helps people uh, in their decision going forward. And um, it's been a, a new experience. It's been uh, challenging and uh, a new technology that takes some time, takes some getting used to, just like anything else. And so I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you, and God bless you. Bye-bye.